Welcome to this presentation of arthroscopic rotator cuff repair combined with augmentation by regenerating collagen membrane. This is 66 years old male with chronic shoulder pain. Problem started with injury over one year ago. Patient has positive clinical signs indicative of the cuff tear, which is weak, painful and limited abduction and flexion, but no weakness of external rotation. MRI of the shoulder shows full thickness complete supraspinatus tear with signs of tendon degeneration but no retraction and no atrophy of the muscle. Patient is under general anesthesia combined with brachial plexus block. We typically place the patient in the beat chair position and then arm holder is used to position the arm through the procedure. Anatomical landmarks are drawn on the skin then arthroscope is inserted via standard portal. After thorough intraarticular evaluation, supraspinatus tear is identified from inside the joint. Additional anterolateral portal is created and shaver is used to debride both footprint and the edge of supraspinatus tendon. Remnants of the soft tissues on the footprint are removed with the werewolf. Next, the scope is transferred into subacromial space and bursectomy is performed. The area of the tear, the footprint and the tendon have to be clearly exposed. Due to clinical, radiologic and arthroscopic signs of impingement, anterolateral acromioplasty is performed. It also brings additional benefit of increased working space. The generate edges of the tendon are removed. We need to assess tendon mobility and reduction to the footprint. Next, the footprint is prepared with microfractures to stimulate bone marrow and possibly enhance tendon to bone healing. We will repair the supraspinatus with double row cross bridge technique. After choosing the right portal with the needle, first anchor is introduced. For the medial row, we are using all suture double loaded Q fix anchor, starting with anteromedial position.
all sutures are passed sequentially through the anterior part of the tendon. Next comes posterior medial anchor. After insertion, all sutures are passed, this time through posterior part of the supraspinatus tendon. Following that, non-sliding knots are tightened and one pair of sutures threads is cut, the other pair remains. We try to leave pairs of different colors from anterior and posterior anchors to get better orientation for lateral row cross bridging. Next, lateral surface of greater tuberosity is exposed for insertion of knotless footprint anchors. One anterior and one posterior sutures are passed through the footprint anchor and anchor itself is impacted into prepared anterolateral hole in the tuberosity. The same maneuvers are performed for posterolateral anchor, again one anterior and one posterior suture is used to compress the tendon against the footprint.
After the final construct is achieved, we can clearly see that tendon is relatively thin and degenerate and footprint area is not fully covered. This for me is the main indication for application of collagen membrane like Regenatin. Bioinductive collagen implant Regenatin is used after supraspinatus tendon have been fully repaired. Whole set that comes with the implant includes all necessary implants and devices. At first, special short and wide cannula from the set is inserted through anterolateral portal that will help in easy passage of delivery device. Then, delivery device is inserted. Before implant delivery into subacromial space, black safe button on the gun needs to be released. Once we are squeezing the trigger, plastic tube is retracting and implant slowly spreads and deploys. At least lateral 5 to 7 mm of implant needs to extend laterally and stay on the bone. Additional narrow transparent cannula from the set is used from antero superior portal for the sake of stapling the membrane. For that we use tendon anchor inserter that applies absorbable staples. Typically 5 to 6 staples are used to fix the membrane to the tendon. Finally, membrane is fixed to the bone laterally. Bone anchor inserter is introduced via lateral portal. Sheath is retracted by release of the slight lever. It will reveal metal pins of the bone punch. Pins are pressed through the membrane against the bone and then impacted with the mallet until fully seated. After squeezing the trigger, bone punch is released and replaced with the peak bone anchor inserter. Once in place, then slightly tapped until flush with the membrane. Typically, three peak staples are used to fix the patch to the bone laterally. After confirmation of position and stable fixation of Regenatin, the procedure is finished. MRI scan at 4 months follow-up shows complete healing of the tendon to the bone. Thank you for watching. We hope that you have enjoyed the arthroscopic procedure with us.